In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my online piano lessons. Um, these are the things that I use. I have my Rodecaster Pro. I have my Nord keyboard. I have a Mac computer. And I use a program called Mediculous Pro. Um, I'll show you all of that. So I use Zoom to communicate to my students. I'll hit share screen. Um, and I want to share the desktop. You don't necessarily have to share the desktop. It's just right there. So I usually share the desktop. Hit share. All right. Then I'm going to go to um, my ridiculous. So that's there. I usually make this just a little bit bigger. So. This is a meeting um, that I've set up with the client. So once I have my screen like I need it to be, I need to get the student in. So I'll go to my participants at the top. I'll click uh, invite. And then from there, I'll go to their email and invite them in. Right. So that's the basic setup for for that, for for bringing a student in. So I'm sure you I'm sure you guys already knew that you wanted to know like what my setup was. So I'm going to show you exactly what my setup is or and how I have it, how I have it function and how I have it moving. So ridiculous. Let's talk about ridiculous. It's uh, I paid ninety nine dollars for it. Um, it's a program that I can. I can actually uh, communicate to the students and they can see what's on my screen. So if I play a chord, they can see the chord in real time. Sounds clear. So I use Mediculous for that reason. There are different views that I can use in Mediculous. I can use this view, which is gonna give me more. It's gonna allow them to see more. Um, it's charted uh, here on the staff, the chord that I played and named the chord several times here. Um, I can use that view. Sometimes that's a little bit too much um, it depends on the level of the student. So I'll use this view, uh, which will just name it right there. Um, then also, they have this view, which has no nothing at the top and just the keyboard at the bottom. So it's just you and the keyboard at the bottom. Um, the student will be um, in that view as well. The student will be at the bottom and they'll be able to communicate with you live. Okay, so that's that's ridiculous. Sweet program. I love it. All right. Then I have the Rodecaster Pro, um, which I'm, I'll throw a picture on the screen, which you can see how that looks. So the Rodecaster Pro is the interface that I use. Um, it is recognized by Zoom um, as one of my interfaces. Let me show you that. Um, so if I go here to the down button, you see I have the Rodecaster Pro here. Um, it's a, it's set up as an as an interface. Um, now what I did was I bought two XLR cables, uh, uh, two L XLR to um, two quarter inch cables, um, so I can come from my Rodecaster Pro into my keyboard. All right, so I'm using channel one and two. Now here's a, here's a here's another cool thing about about that. I'm I'm coming in channel one and two. Now the Rodecaster, of course, um, if you've done any research on it at all, you know they advertise it as a podcasting or broadcasting type thing. What I had to do to make this work for me was just simply turn all of the effects off. So once I turn all of the effects off, I get that really really clean sound. I can turn my faders down. Um, on the sounds if I need if I need to right there um, everything is there microphone is in channel three so channel one and two was keys channel three is the microphone and of course that's set on the dynamic um, level uh, for that there are many uh, rollcaster videos that you can watch just kind of wanted to, uh, to show you what, what I have going on here now also um, 
I, they can communicate, like I said, they can communicate with me um, back, and it doesn't have to go through the speaker. So everything that's played um, in my computer comes to the Rodecaster Pro. Everything that's played into the Rodecaster Pro comes out of the Rodecaster Pro, but everything that's also played in, in the computer comes out of the Rodecaster Pro, which means as well, so if I'm teaching a class and I want to show my student a piece of music, like I'll show you, like we'll act like you're the student, and I wanted to go, to, so let's say I wanted to go to my channel. So I go to my channel. And I pull up uh, this video on Draw Me Nearer, the Draw Me Nearer tutorial. Just try to keep it really, really simple so that you can get the understanding. But I'm going to break down. So you can hear that, right? Some other options. And we'll stop that there. Um, you, but you can hear, you know, what every, they can see. Your student can see everything that you have going on on your screen. Um, and it, and it, and it makes it super, super, um, clear. Now, as far as the keyboard that I'm using, I'm just using the Nord stage three. I'll show you uh, the picture of that. And I'm using the, um, I'm actually using the USB MIDI. So I'm USB MIDI out to the computer. All right. I'm USB MIDI out to the computer. And then from the Rodecaster, it's just one cable from the Rodecaster to the computer as well. Now I use this uh, small Belkin, um, which allows me to have more USB ports on my computer. All right. Now here's the cool thing about Zoom. Now I'm not endorsed by any of these companies, um, so I'm just giving you my setup. But here's the cool thing about Zoom: I can allow them to record. I, I went up here and I click more on my Zoom menu. Um, I can allow the student to record. Um, as well. So what I would do is go to participants. Um, and then when their name comes up, of course, it's my name here, but when their name comes up, they'll have the option to record on their screen or, or on their device. If not, I can just record it to the cloud and send it to them that way. You'll see those options once they're, once they're in, but they'll be under participants. And then you just click on more and that you want to allow them to record. So this way your student has your, your lesson or your class all week. They have the actual video screen recording of your entire lesson. The whole week. one key thing that you need to do is make sure that you have zoom optimized for music. Um, which means you have went in, uh, let's just do it. Let's do that. You have went in, uh, to your zoom meeting. Um, I'm click, I'm click the, I click the down arrow there. I'm going to go to audio settings. All right. So make sure your, yours looks like this. Um, automatically adjust microphone off. All right. Advanced. And then make sure it, this, this screen looks like this. Okay. All right, disable, disable, auto. Show meeting option, uh, I mean, it's up to you. But make sure your screen literally looks like this. I don't, I don't want to go to other people. I've done videos on it. I'm giving you the setup that works. Make sure all of this stuff is off. And then in your roadcaster, make sure all of your auto, make sure all of your um, processing is off, at least on the keyboard channel. Microphone. Um, you might want processing on that. That'll give you this good, clean sound like you're hearing now. But make sure everything is off, and um, and you'll be good. You'll be able to send them. You'll be able to send them your your uh, actual video lessons, and they'll be able to see what you're playing um, from that. So yeah, that's what I have. It just makes everything a lot simpler. This is pretty much my 2020 version or 2020 way of, you know. Staying, staying in the game, staying, staying above technology, making sure that I'm offering the best actual product to my, um, to my clients, making sure they understand. I started just FaceTiming lessons because I was like, man, there's people all over. I want to get students. I started FaceTiming and then I bought the Medeculous and then I got, um, I, I figured out how to get Zoom and Medeculous working together. All right. Let me know. 
what you think about that? You know, what what are you guys using? Comment, leave it in the comments. What are you using? What's working for you? All right. This works for me. Have a good day. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.